Welcome to Jeremiah's Fifth Ministries, a place where you can grow in God's Word. Well, we are live. How you doing today? Are you doing good? Well, we're here again in the middle of the week on a Wednesday, and I believe that we've got a special table in store for you, and I believe that the Lord's going to be a blessing to your life today. Are you doing good today? Are you pumped up? How's your week going? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you doing good? Well, you know, I believe God's doing some wonderful things, and he's doing some wonderful things for you, and he's doing some wonderful things for me, and I believe he's helping us grow spiritually, and I believe that's what he wants for us today. Are we going to grow some spiritually today? Are we going to hear from heaven today? I believe that's what we're going to do, and we're going to hear what God has to say about some things today. You know, I'm so glad I get to be with you. I hope that you've had a good beginning of your week. I hope you haven't had too many challenges and too many things that you've been going on where you haven't been able to focus on the Lord like you ought to. But I believe God wants you to focus on Him this week, not give up, not cave in, not quit. You know, all the affairs of life getting you down. Well, you know, God will bring you through. He's He gives you grace to overcome and, and your weaknesses. He is strong. Isn't that good to know? And we never give up. We never quit. We never cave in. We always keep going forward and trust in the Lord. And He's got some wonderful things in store for you today and this week and this is your week you know i believe god wants to do some he's going to finish this week up good for you and uh, you may think well man i don't know if i can take any more today well he's going to finish this week up good for you just rely on him rely on his strength rely on his rest and rely on his presence so he can bring you through this week you know we're supposed to be strong in him not in your own strength and uh, we're supposed to be relying on him and not relying on ourselves so much. You know, God will help you, and he'll help you overcome this life and help you fulfill the destiny he has for this life. Do you believe that? I believe it, and I believe that he wants to do that for you today. If you just let him see, spend some time with him, get close to him, and let him give you the grace to overcome in every situation that you're facing today, I believe he'll help you do that. Well, you can catch us live every Wednesday and every Sunday. I try to be here every Wednesday and every Sunday. Sunday for you, Ed Foots. If I'm not here, something had to happen. <laughs> Amen. So uh, something may have happened, but we try to be here every Wednesday and Sunday for you. And I'm so glad that I get to be here. Maybe the rapture came. Maybe that's what happened if I'm not here. You know, I'd, be, I'd love that. I'd love to be gone in the twinkling of an eye. Uh, that's uh, the people in heaven are a whole lot better off than we are. So I'm looking forward to that. If you got some loved ones up there, they're a whole lot better off than you are. And we're supposed to be enjoying our time here on earth, fulfilling his purpose, doing everything we can to our last breath and fulfilling what God has for us here. And, you know, and I believe that we're going to do that. And I believe we can do that for the Lord. And he wants to do that with you. You're not supposed to do it all by yourself. Like I said, but you need to fulfill the purpose he has for you on earth. And we have a, everything ends good for us. Every situation, situation ends good for us. You know, even when we we're out of here, it's all good. And we're good. We always triumph through Christ Jesus and every situation we always turn out good. And the enemy may think, well, he's got you now, but no, your situation always turns out good because God always works it out for you. Good. Isn't that right? And that what it says in Romans eight chapter, eight chapter where he says he works all things to the good of those who love him and he's working it to your good you may be facing with challenge today challenges today but he's working it for your good he's working behind the scenes you may see some things but he's working it for the good isn't that good to know well you know though on wednesdays you can catch us here at 6 p.m central time you can catch us on sundays at 4 p.m central time and uh, you're welcome to listen to the live services at those times if you like if you know if you're want to you can listen to us live on Podbeam, or you can listen to us live or on the stream and video on youtube hey out there on youtube how you doing out there and uh, you can watch us on youtube if you'd like to there we are live right now but if you'd like to listen to the rebroadcast you can go to spotify google music itunes listen notes uh, Podbeam, tune in off alexia iheart radio stitcher deezer uh, pandora amazon music verbal you can listen to us on youtube uh audio junkie apple wherever you want to listen to us you can listen to us pretty much on every avenue there and I, i'm so glad that we are fortunate to be on so many different places but you are to listen to you're able to listen to us there i like to listen on audio uh, audible i think audible is pretty neat there you know you can listen to lots of good christian audio books there on audible so that's a pretty neat little service there if you have that but if you can't catch the live, you can listen to the rebroadcast in many different avenues. And I encourage you to take advantage of that. And of course, on Podbeam, that's our home. 
Uh, there's over 200 and I believe 70 podcasts on there or something like that to grow spiritually. And uh, you can go listen there. And of course we have coffee confessions we put out and we just put one out on Sunday morning there or early Sunday morning for you to have during the week. So I come alongside you, kind of coach you and kind of encourage you more than anything to do your confessions every day. And so, you know, you speak in the good things of God's word for your week, you know, it needs to come out of our mouth and we need to say the things that we need to want, that we want to have in this life out of our mouths. You know, Jesus said, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he says, uh, speak to your mountain right paraphrasing it there's if you want them to be moved and you want challenges and you want things to change your life you got to speak some things and call those things that be not as though they were and you can listen to some messages on that we just did a whole series on calling those things and there's another one on our confessions and they're they're great messages there but i just come along and encourage you to do that i know it's easy not to do it if you're not careful and so i kind of just thought it would be neat to come along and kind of encourage you to do that in your life of course we do some praying of some anointed prayers there but to take advantage of that coffee confessions if you get a chance there i believe it'll be a blessing to your life if you'd like to give you can give you can go to uh, our website jeremiasmithministries.podbean.com to give if you'd like to you don't, there's no pressure to give you know we're not forcing you to give i'm not reaching out trying to grab your wallet today i'm not sitting there trying to take all your money that you got left today no <laughs> you can give if you'd like to and uh, i believe that god will be a blessing back to you the bible says in luke 6 38 says give and it shall be given you good measure pressed down shaking together running over that's how he does things he runs things over and you know and if you'd like to give you can give but if you don't make sure you're giving somewhere some ministry your church wherever you're giving give consecutively so god can be your source and a blessing to your life right that's how he, he gets it into your life is by you sowing good seeds over and over and it, produces the things that you need to have in your life so make sure you're doing that and uh, i believe god will be a blessing to you well we're going to get into our message today i hope that you're fired up and ready to go pumped up and uh, grab your bible get your tablet get your phone get yourself ready there we're going to get into the word of god today i've got my tea here i got this new cup here it says doing good <laughs> Isn't that right are we doing good yeah, we're doing good. It actually supports a cause there. It's pretty neat there. But, you know, I like that cup. Doing good. Are you doing good today? Are you doing all right? You know, I'm just checking in on you. You know, God wants you to do good and he wants you to do all right. You know, so I'm checking in on you, knocking on your door, knocking on the, the, your your phone, knocking on your tablet. They're checking in on you to know, are you doing good? You are doing a lot better than you think you are. You got the greater one on the inside of you. You don't have to fail. You don't have to lose. No, you were created to win. And we're, that's what we're talking about today. Matter of fact, you know, is that you were created to rule and reign in this life, right? That's what authority is about. You're supposed to be ruling and dominating over your circumstances in this life. You know, of course, we're not perfect. We have challenges, but you know, you weren't created to lose. God created you to win and he created you to have good success in your life. Do you believe that? Yeah, I believe it. Let's pray today. Father, we just thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. And Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit being here today. Holy Spirit, have your way today as we get into this message. I ask that you move and have your way in every facet, every area, unlocking hearts, touching minds, Father, healing people, uh, removing burdens, removing yokes, Father, by your Holy Spirit. You're the one that does all that, Father. We just thank you. We rely on you today. I ask that you touch that one listening today that's needing healing. We ask for total healing for them right now of their heart and of their mind, Father. We ask for total Total and complete healing for that for them today in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask that you carry it, that we cast all of our cares on you and we give them to you right now. We think your shoulders are a whole lot bigger than ours and you're carrying those for us now. And we just now we we're homing in to listen to your Holy Spirit. And Father, we just ask that you flood us with light. Help us to see some stuff we've never seen before. Help us to get what we need today. And we just thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. I ask that everyone listening gets what they need today, Father, spiritually. And, Father, we just rely on you for that today. And we just thank you for it in advance. We give you all the praise. Thank you for taking care of our families, taking care of us, giving us lots of word, giving us lots of direction. 
making our lives on track with you, Father, because that's what you do. You keep us on track with you and everything we do. And we just thank you, Father, by your, by, we thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for giving us the time to be with you today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, we don't, we don't just have time today with, it, with him. You know, he's always in us. He's always guiding us. He's always helping us. He's wanting to help you more than you want to be helped today. Do you know that? He wants to help you. And he wants to make sure that you're on track. You know, he's speaking all the time. He's speaking in your spirit. He's trying to give you direction. We just got to be sensitive to him, and he'll help us get where we need to go. Well, let's get into our message today. Go over to Matthew, the eighth chapter, in the, in the fifth verse. I got my doing good cup here because I'm doing good. Are you doing good? All right. Well, let's get into this. Matthew, the eighth chapter in the fifth verse, it says it like this. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Boy, that's powerful to think about. You know, he's grievously tormented. You ever been there? Have you ever seen someone like that? You know, people are tormented today. There's people tormented with fear. There's people tormented with worry, don't even want to leave their houses, you know. Yet this guy says, hey, I want to come help. And this is his servant. This isn't his brother. This isn't his sister or family member. He wants to take care of his servant. You know, do you care for someone today? I like that about the centurion. He cares about somebody, and he goes to Jesus. He knows where the answers come from, right? You know, you're, you, you, the answers for your friends' problems, for your the people you work with's problems, you know, is Jesus. Are you going to go and make sure they get Jesus in their lives? Are you going to help them get the direction? You know, I was talking the other day about how I was actually pastoring a church at the time, you know, and I was going, I was working a job while I was pastoring the church. And I'll never forget, I was working with these coworkers that, you know, they didn't know Jesus. And I knew there was a church not too far from where I worked that was more young people oriented. You know, I was a little bit older than them, you know, and I, I was like, man, I'm going to take them over there on my days off. So I went on Saturdays and I'd actually go over, you know, there and take them over there so that they were, you know, getting, get them saved. <laughs> I, mean, I wanted to make sure that they got saved. I knew that was a good environment for them to get saved. You know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, you know, and I was putting them in an environment that would help them achieve, you know, to get saved and help them to see how good God is, you know, and I was doing that on my days off. I was pastoring on Sundays, working all during the week, you know, but it was important to me about their salvation. Is it important to you about people's needs? Maybe somebody needs a healing. Maybe, maybe they need some direction, you know? I mean, what 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 do they need? I think that the centurion was doing a good thing here. He was he, he knew this person was tormented, and he didn't want to see them live that kind of life, you know? And we should have concern about people around us, shouldn't we? We should be thinking about their needs if we love them. If we got that kind of love on the inside of us that God has, we should care about their needs and care about people around us and see what we can do. You're not always the one. You're not always the person God uses, but, you know, we should be caring about people's needs around us, right? And if, if you're the one, you feel led to do it, do something that you can do to get them closer to God and get their healing, get them saved, help them to grow spiritually, help them to get direction, you know? You weren't probably put there by accident. You know, you need to be listening to the Holy Spirit on the inside. Now, that doesn't mean every time, you know, I don't know why we're taking this side journey, but I'm going to say this to you because I think it's good. You may not be the person that God wants to use every time, you know. I don't always, you know, minister to a person on the side of the street, and I don't always minister to a homeless. Now, I've, I've done lots of things and given to lots of them, but it doesn't mean I'm always the one, you know. Sometimes I don't feel that that way. And, you know, sometimes God wants to use somebody else, and you need to be listening to the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, right? We're, we're all supposed to submit and listen to the Holy Spirit and be led by Him and everything. Let's go ahead and get on to this here. Now, he said he, he, he was caring about his servant, came to Jesus, and Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. You know, and I've emphasized this a few times. I'm going to say it again. You know, this tells you the will of God concerning healing, he said, I will come and heal him. You know, he, he didn't sit there and go, I don't know if I have time. And this isn't God's thing. You know, I, I, this isn't a God project, <laughs> you know, but he cared about this person's healing and he cares about your healing today. It may not be physical, it might be your, the, you have a broken heart or you got things that you're, you're dealing with, but he cares about the healing that you need in your life. He cares about your needs. 
He cares about stuff that would surprise you. I was talking to my wife the other day. We were talking about the um, the first miracle of Jesus when he turned the water to wine. You know, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to help them with that particular need, you know. But God, I mean, he cared about their party, <laughs> right? You know, and I'm not sitting there saying he wants you to, to party hard and, you know, do things you shouldn't do. But, you know, he Jesus brought the party. He made sure the party kept going, you know, and he wants to keep your party going. Whatever you're going through today, he wants to keep it going. He wants to make sure that you're living a good life. And he cared about their need. This wasn't a healing need. This wasn't something they had to have. But he he cared about the things that they were interested in. He cares about your interests. He cares about what's going on with you a whole lot more than you think he cares about what's going on with you because he loves you and he cares about what's happening in your life. Let's go ahead and get into this real quick here. He says, and Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. You know, a lot of people feel like this. They don't feel like they're worthy, you know. But Jesus made you worthy. For when he went to the cross, he made you worthy. If you're not saved, uh, you know, you need to get Jesus in your life. He wants you to realize that you're worry, worthy once you get saved. He wants to take care of you. He wants to make a covenant with you because he wants to take care of your needs. And he wants you to have the stuff that you desire in your life, you know. You know, your desires aren't all that bad because, you know, you're trying to fulfill a purpose God put in your heart. You don't even realize that most of your desires are lining up to go to where you want to go for him and to take care of other people, you know. It's amazing, you know, when I go out and I go shopping or something, I'm usually thinking about something I can do for my family. I'm usually thinking about something I can do for someone else. Are those bad desires? No, those are godly desires. God wants to take care of your family, and he wants to take care of the people around you, and he wants you to think about others, you know, and he wants you to make sure you have more than what you need so you can be a blessing to someone else, you know, and maybe that isn't finances. Maybe that's just stuff or maybe just calling and encouraging somebody, you know, but those aren't bad desires. You have a new nature when you're born again, and you have lots of good desires in there, you know, and all everything good is you know, from God, <laughs> isn't that right? You know, I mean, if it's, if it's the devil, you know, it's bad. It's not a, it's not a good desire, but if it's from God, it's a good desire. So, you know, that, you know, if you're thinking about something good, it's probably from God, right? Powerful little thing. It's easy to separate those out. It's clear as day. Good things from God, bad things are from the devil, you know, and you need to sort that out in your spirit. Be listening to those good desires on the inside. The eighth verse is the centurion answer said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servants shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled. You know, he could have said, you're probably not going to get your healing done here because you don't ever feel worthy, <laughs> you know, because if he looked at that side of it, he could have said, man, that's, that's going to be a problem, you know, because you, you, you're not, you don't feel like you're in right standing with me, you know, and that can affect your prayer life. That can affect so many things, you know, because you don't understand righteousness. If you're having a trouble with that, you can listen to my righteousness series. I believe it'll be a blessing to you. You know, I have that on Podbeam and probably on all the other ones there too. But uh, I know it's on video. You can watch it on YouTube. But if, if you're having trouble with righteousness or feeling like you're not worthy, that's a problem with understanding righteousness is what it is. And he's having trouble with that here. But, you know, that didn't seem to deter him because he understood authority. And he marveled because he understood authority. He, and it was a big deal to Jesus. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. He said he hadn't found that in his own people, some such great faith as he did with this man that understood authority. You know, he wasn't even looking at his him not feeling unworthy. He was looking at the fact this man understands authority. And he knows if I'm going to call for it, it's going to get done. Or if I speak it, it's going to happen because he understands authority. The 11th verse says, And I say to you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the, the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
Well, that's interesting. You know, some people don't believe there's a hell. There's a real hell, right? And, you know, you want to make sure you know Jesus so you don't go there, right? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. And listen to what he says here. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. That shows you the will of God. He wanted him healed, or he wouldn't have even had him get healed. He wouldn't even spoke the right thing for him to get healed. But he was marveled by this man understanding authority, and that's why we need to understand authority. You know, he he said he had great faith. Do you want to have some great faith today? You got to understand authority in your life. It's important to understand it so you can have the great faith that makes Jesus marvel. I don't know about you, but I like to make Jesus marvel. He doesn't say that a whole lot of times in the Bible that he marveled, does he? But this particular situation he did, do you want to get his attention? Do you want to get Jesus' attention in your life? Well, you have to understand authority. And this is one of the most important subjects you can possibly know about God's word is authority. And so that you can protect your family, protect yourself, keep yourself, keep the enemy on the run from your family. You know, he likes to attack your family. He likes to attack you. But if you understand authority, you can keep him on the run. But you have to understand your position and authority in Christ Jesus. This is a review from last week. You know, we were looking at Adam who was given authority over the earth. We looked at some scriptures on that, how he was given authority over the earth and everything on the earth, actually, is what the scripture says. Every creeping thing, you know, all the creeps. <laughs> but he had authority over all the earth. And he gave us, and, the, and then Adam, you know, of course, you know, he was deceived, not just Eve, he was deceived, and he gave his authority to Satan. We said this was because he, he was not exercising his authority over every creeping thing. And, you know, the devil was a creeping thing into the earth. You know, he was he disguised himself as a snake. And he wasn't supposed to be given any advice about how to run things, you know, because God had given Adam the, the he gave him the instructions that he wanted him to do. And he was supposed to be t tending the garden, you know, and that's important to know in your own home. Right. You're supposed to be tending the spiritual atmosphere of your home. If you don't feel like something's right in your spirit, you need to take authority over it. Who's going to do it if you don't? Who's going to take authority over it if you don't? If you don't feel good about something in your spirit, you need to take authority in, in with with God's authority that he's given to you in your, in your home. You can tell the enemy to get out of here, you know, if you want to. I remember the story of Brother Hagin he told, and you probably can read it in the Believer's uh, Authority or Authority of the Believer, his book there. They have an expanded edition now that's actually even bigger. But it talks about how, you know, when he was talking to Jesus, he had a vision of Jesus, and there was a, a monkey jumping up in between them, and he couldn't hear Jesus. He kept making all this noise, and he was jumping up in between them. And Jesus just kept on talking, didn't do anything. <laughs> he said, they're trying to, and he wants this information that Jesus is trying to give him in this vision that he was having. But this monkey just kept jumping up and down in between them, you know. And uh, he, he was shocked because Jesus wouldn't do anything. You know, he just let him keep talking and, or Jesus just kept on talking and you know, he kept carrying on. He could have been great wisdom, but he couldn't hear it because this thing was making all this noise in between them, jumping up and down, you know, think about that today, you know? And, and so he finally said, get out of here. And he told that monkey to get out of here. And then it was his surprise. Jesus told him, if you hadn't have done that, I couldn't have done nothing about it. Why? Because he gave authority to us, didn't he? And the earth to rule and reign, you know, and there's certain things you have authority over, you know, and you say, well, why does this happen to me? Well, because God's given you authority to take authority over your home and your situations in your home. And he's going, he's relying on you to do something about it. You know, and there's lots of things in the Bible we're asked to do and we're supposed to take it and to take care of it, you know, and we can't put it all on God because he's given us the things that we need through Christ Jesus. And we have to make sure that we're taking authority over it with his power and his word and his authority. So anyway, we were going to go on from there, you know, but we were talking about that with the Garden of Eden. Adam didn't take authority there. And uh, so, you know, what happened? Well, we talked about it caused sin to come into his life. And it, his spirit it caused his life to be drained out of him because of that. Right? That's what ended up happening in the Garden of Eden. He was drained. He no longer had the spiritual awareness that he should have had because 
he had sin in his life. And that's what Jesus was talking about in Mark, the second chapter, the 22nd verse. And listen to what it says here. It says, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost and the bottles destroyed. But the new wine is to be put in new, fresh wineskins. He's talking about the recreation of your spirit. When you're born again, God recreates your spirit and he puts the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Right. And so you have spiritual awareness because the Holy Spirit's living in your spirit. Plus, he gave you a new you. He said, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, something never made before. You're a new creation in him. So notice something new happened to you to hold his presence and his wine and God's life and God's presence in you. And that's why I believe he says with long life, he'll satisfy us, you know, it's because he's recreated us. And he's got a long life for you. And he's restored you on the inside, your spirit. And he's made you a better you. And we have to live like that now. And he's given us our authority. So today we're going to be talking about Satan and how he stole Adam's authority. Let's look at that real quick. Now we know that Satan was an illegal alien on the earth. (laughs) He wasn't even supposed to be here, was he? No, he wasn't supposed to be here. Why? Because he was a fallen angel. And does not have a body. He's not a person. God didn't create him for the earth. He created us for this earth, but he didn't create Satan for this earth. You know, if I was going to say, you know, because I'm in America, you know, if I'm going to say I'm I'm an American, I was born here, <laughs> right? Well, Satan wasn't born here, and so he, you know, he doesn't have legal access to be here. He's not supposed to be here, but Adam gave that legal access to him. And he gave him the authority that he had on this planet. And that's why he's been here for all the time. He said, now Jesus came and took that authority back. We're going to talk about that. But uh, we're still talking about Lucifer, Satan. Well, Satan, has he wasn't born on the earth. And he was he was illegally, he's he's not from here. Let's look here look, real quick here at the uh, Luke, uh, the 10th chapter. Luke, the 10th chapter, the 17th verse. Now, listen to what it says about Satan here. It says, and, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan lightning fall from heaven. Right? Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be any means hurt you. So his origin is not from here. He's not from here. He's an angel. He's a fallen angel. And he is not from here. So he doesn't have a legal right to be here. And so we're going to get into that. And he is he's a fallen angel. And he and the only way that he can actually work in the earth is through an earth suit or a body, right? When we die, we will not, we won't, you know, we don't have legal right here. We actually leave our body here, you know. And so, you know, you go on to heaven. There's no reason for you to long, no longer be here. Your earth suit's no longer here, so you're gone, (laughs) right? But your earth suit is one of the main reasons why you have legal access to be here. Why? Because we give up our earth suit when we leave our body. Now, if we're going to live here, then you're supposed to have an earth suit or a body, or Bible calls it a temple. And we're supposed to take care of this temple, you know, whatever it takes. That's why, I, you know, I try to work out, try to eat right, you know, make sure and take care of this temple, you know, because God wants us to take care of this temple. And you say, well, why is that important? Well, you know, he wants you to fulfill your earth days as long as you possibly can because he's got a purpose for you. And he has things he wants you to fulfill in this earth. And that authority is so important. And the timing of you being here. And so it's important that you take care of your temple. That's uh, That was uh, how God created it to be. The devil was, you know, he was here illegally, snuck in another way through his snake's body is how he did it, and he did it illegally. When we see that in John the 10th chapter, the first verse, he says, For verily, verily, I say unto you that he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. So he didn't do it a legal way. He did it with his nature of, you know, of evil is what he did. He was a thief and a robber. And, you know, today, if you're stealing stuff and you're a thief and a robber, you know, you're, you're just siding with the enemy, right? And, that, and he's the one, he's coercing you to do that is why you do that. That's his nature. That's who he is. And that's why you, you're caused to do that. And that's one of the things he does. He deceives people and he gets them off the wrong direction. But he that enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. 
Do you know who the shepherd is? The good shepherd? That's God. And he is the good shepherd. He's a good shepherd to you. He'll lead you to have a good life, a good successful life, because he is a good shepherd. If the devil really wants to do something in the earth, he really has to have a body. And he, you know, he can't enter your body if you're saved. You got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. But he's trying to work somebody's body but use their authority so he can get things done in the earth. This is why he really can't do much to you. And this is why he really is trying to get you to do something to yourself. He likes to try to coerce you to say something or get you to do something you shouldn't do, you know, because he really, that's his only way to influence you. Why do you think Jesus sent, he, God sent Jesus to get things done on the earth? Well, he needed a body. And that's because there's a time frame on earth that God has said that we have to rule and reign. And, of course, then the rapture is going to happen. We, we're going to talk about that. I'm working on a series right now for the book of Revelation. And so we understand these things a little bit better, you know. But that's why we have it. There's a time frame and there's a lease on this planet that's going to be ending at a certain point. And then God's going to come back, and we're going to see some things that that are going to blow your mind, right? Because he he wants to do some things, you know, in a certain time frame, and he's given us authority over a certain time frame. Even the Holy Spirit lives in your body to work in the earth. He lives in your spirit, but he's here to get the work done in the earth. And remember the scripture says, he that will let will let, and until, you know, talking about in Thessalonians, until the time basically talking about the Antichrist, well, he can't do nothing while we're here on this earth and talking about that. The Holy Spirit lives in us, and we're part of that body, and he lives in us to fulfill a purpose that God has for our lives, you know. And, you know, if we're praying, the devil can't do stuff, unfortunately, because we have authority. Unfortunately, I'm saying fortunately, because we have authority to keep him from doing the things he needs to do. That's why there has to be a rapture. Yeah, that's why we have to get out of here or the tribulation would never happen because we have authority through Christ Jesus. So where is Satan from? Well, he's he's from heaven and he, he is here illegally. The earth was created for man to rule and to reign. And some people have a problem with this, you know. They think, well, no, we weren't created to rule and reign because the enemy's got you deceived, not making you think that you're not important and you're not here to fulfill a purpose that God has for you. But he didn't create you to lose. He created you to be the winner. You know, you look at Adam, our very our ancestry, where we even started, he told him he was supposed to rule the earth and subdue it. And that's what you are called to do is to subdue an area that God's called you to, not over people. He never mentioned to Adam to rule over people, but he, he wants you to rule over a space that he has given you on this earth. And you're supposed to reign in that area that God's called you to reign in. Isaiah explains what happened here. Isaiah 14, the 12th verse, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? When, when didst thou weaken the, the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Notice these I statements here. And you know, anytime you see a bunch of I statements, that's a person focused on themselves. And that's very selfish when you're focused on yourself. You know, depression comes very quickly when you're focusing on yourself, right? And things that, and things that you don't want to happen, uh, happen when you start focusing on yourself. We're supposed to focus on others. You know, the Bible says that we're supposed to love people like we love each, each other. We're supposed to focus on God. He said the first, the two commandments are all summed up in this, to love your God, you know, and then to love your brothers yourself. Did he say love yourself? <laughs> no, he didn't. He wants you to focus and keep your focus off of yourself. And Satan started this. He started this self-focus. And listen to what he says here. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high. Listen to that one statement, though. The second one, he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So he wanted to have a throne. You know, he wanted to rule and reign. He wasn't created to rule and reign, you know, but he wanted to rule and reign. Yet, uh, listen to what it says here in the 15th verse. It says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. <laughs> so his pl plan to rule and reign uh, didn't work. And he was shot down like a lightning from heaven, and, you know, because 
he started focusing on himself, you know, and we're not supposed to focus on ourselves, are we? We're supposed to focus on being a blessing to others. And he got himself into this uh, deceiving himself. Satan is a deceiver and he even deceived himself. That's how good of a deceiver he is. Think about this today. You know, he, he didn't just deceive people around him because he took one third of the angels with him, but he also deceived himself. Man, that's bad when you're deceiving even yourself. <laughs> but that's what he did. He's so deceived right now. He thinks he can do some things in the earth, you know, but God has already made a way for us to make sure that we rule and reign over him. But he deceives himself. He thinks that he can do anything he wants, but he can't because of Jesus, right? With his own pride and his haughty spirit, he deceived himself. He didn't want to be just an angel or what he was created to be. He wanted to have a throne. You know, and that's a dangerous thing, though, when you see people wanting to be wanting this and wanting that they're so focused on themselves you know and they're getting that from the enemy he's the one that created this and it didn't god didn't want it in heaven it got sped out of heaven because he didn't want people being selfish like lucifer right he wanted to have a throne above the stars of god but what happened let's look here proverbs the 16th chapter and the 18th verse and you might be familiar with this scripture, but this powerful scripture, when you look at it, it's Proverbs 18, 16th chapter and the 18th verse. It says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride's a nasty thing. And destruction, it causes destruction and it causes you to, it can cause you a fall when you get focused on yourself. We see how that happens. You start getting focused on yourself because of his pride and his haughty spirit, he fell. Luke to the 10th chapter and the 18th verse. I know I'm going through this quickly, but I have many more messages to go through, and I'm trying to get us through this. Luke, the 10th chapter and the 18th verse, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. <laughs> I was listening to a song not too long ago talking about how he fell, you know, like lightning from heaven, you know. And, you know, he, he deceived himself is what happened. And, you know, we can deceive ourselves, too, if we're looking at ourselves all the time. We can deceive ourselves, think we're doing good things, but when you're not doing what God want you to do, then it's not a good thing. We need to be doing what he's leading us to do and guiding us to do. How did Satan cause problems for Adam and Eve? He deceived them. And how, that's how he causes problems for everybody is he deceives people. You know, it's easy to be deceived by him if you're, if you're listening to him. You know, we don't want to listen to the lies of the devil. No, so we, ha we have to understand that the devil can't do much on the earth without a body, so he deceives people. This is how he gets people to treat each other bad. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, when you get to get in an argument with somebody, how, you know, you're almost like you're divinely inspired. <laughs> you know, suddenly you can remember everything bad about them. You know, you can remember all the negative and suddenly all the good stuff's not focused at anymore. You know, it's easy. You remember back when it first started, you can go way back, you know, and you think about that though. It's like you're divinely inspired that you could, you can get in an argument with people, you know, getting on the phone with somebody can, you know, easily cause strife because you just, it seems like you just divinely inspired to remember the not good things to cause a division between you two, but you can focus on all the good stuff. And the Holy Spirit will bring out the good stuff about each other and cause you to be you work together better if you're listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, you can be divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit to walk in love and to show love to each other if you're listening to the Holy Spirit. Just like it was with Eve, there, Revelations, the 12th chapter, the ninth verse, it says, And the great dragon was cast out and uh, old, and the serpent called the devil. We're talking about Revelations, the 12th chapter, the ninth verse. And the great uh, dragon was cast down and the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. But it shows that he can deceive nations. You know, so you're not somebody that he, he can, you know, if he can deceive nations, he can easily de deceive you if you're not careful, if you're not really paying attention to God's word. And listening to the Holy Spirit, we don't want to be deceived. You know, I don't want him using me to do any of his bidding. <laughs> do you? Or do you, you? You have to focus on walking in love. You have to focus on the good things. Remember what we talked about earlier? There's good things we can focus on or there's bad things we can focus on. And we know the bad is going to be from the enemy. The good is always going to be from God. And that's our choice today. What are you focusing on today? Are you focusing on the good? 
Or are you focusing on the bad? You know, the enemy loves to get you focused on that, especially with relationships, you know. He likes to get you to focus on the bad when God's trying to get you to focus on the good. How many times God gets you focused on the bad? No, he's very, matter of fact, he tells us that we're supposed to edify each other, right? That's what the scripture says is to edify each other. And the enemy likes to get us focused on things that cause division and strife within you and your family, your friends, your church. You know, you have to focus on the good things. Vines defines this like this, deceive. The word deceive, it vines defines it as to give false impression whether by appearance, statement, or influence. Remember what I talked about, divinely inspired, <laughs> right? So that's what he does. He divinely inspires you. He gives you a false impression, whether by appearance, statement, or influence. And don't we get that a lot from the news today? You know, there's lots of negative things in the news. You know, you have to be careful. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't know news and know what's going on in the world, but you shouldn't meditate on all kinds of things that are negative all the time. It'll, be, it'll make you a negative person if you're not careful. You have to make sure that you're keeping good things within your spirit. We're not garbage cans, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Good things in, good things come out, you know. The scripture talks about that out of the heart full of the issues of life, but we got to put the good things in. It's important that we do that. The dictionary says it like this, to cause someone to believe something that is not true. That's what deceiving is. Typically in order to gain some personal advantage. Wow. Is that what the enemy tries to do? He, he's trying to get an advantage of you. He cause you to believe something that's not true. You know, you you don't you may not have been taught to the person. It's amazing how you can think all kinds of stuff about somebody, not even talking to them. You know, <laughs> you may have known them for years, but you don't know exactly what they think on that subject if you haven't asked them and took a little time to see their thoughts and how they feel about it. Maybe they even felt another way when they were younger, or maybe they feel a little different as they get older. I know now I'm I'm 47, you know, and the, I don't act like I used to act when I was younger, you know. And you have to think about that as you get older. You, you do take changes, and you do have changes of your life. But it's important to know how a person feels about something before you just assume something. And you need to listen to them. Sometimes you even get more wisdom as you get older. you know. But it's important that we don't just sit there and get a false impression about them without even talking to them. You know? It's interesting. You, know, you hear the news, and they'll talk about somebody in particular, and they haven't even talked to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they, you need to get your thoughts and get their feelings. You have to speak to them. And it's, the enemy loves to get you to think negative thoughts and negative impressions about people, people closest to you to cause division. And the reason why is because the more that you're close to people, like if you're with your wife, you know, the Bible says that two of you praying in agreement that anything will be done for you. So he wants to stop that connection because he knows your prayer life is very powerful. I don't know if, man, I, I'd have to really think about it, but I, every time me and my wife agree on something, I, the prayer happens <laughs> because there's so much power in prayer. I mean, there's so many things that have happened just for a power of agreement, you know? So you can see why the enemy doesn't like that power of agreement. He hates that power of agreement because it causes good things to happen for you and you both see your faith being built. You start seeing God move. He, and it's not just one person anymore. It's two people seeing it happen. And so he wants to make division happen in there if you're not careful and will really watch it. Like we talked about maintaining the garden, watching over your home, making sure that, you know, that we even before I started this podcast, my son was praying and we're coming in agreement with him before we start the podcast. But, you know, the enemy would love to get division there because the power of agreement is so important, right? Let's look again at what happened to Eve when he lied to her and, and gave her a false impression. That, well, Genesis, the third chapter, the first verse is where this happened. Let's go ahead and go to the third verse here. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say? Boy, have you ever had him talk to you like that today? Did he really say that you're going to have a good future? Did he really say that these things are going to happen in your life? Did he really say he was going to heal you? Did he really say he's going to prosper you? Did he really say you're going to get to heaven? Isn't that kind of how he talks? Listen to what he says here. You must not eat from any tree in the garden, questioning God. You know, and God doesn't lie. He's never lied. 
Let's go in the second verse. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from uh, the fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did not say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the uh, middle of the garden, you, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from this tree, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when the uh, woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took from it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was, where was he? He was with her and he ate it. And then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked. And so they showed, sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. This is how he's working today. He deceives you. And he tries to get you to do things that you shouldn't do. And that's how he took their authority. And you have to be careful about that in your life. You know, he, he's deceiving you so you won't take authority in your own home. He will deceive you to make you think there's always something better. He will tell you it's okay. God doesn't really, he doesn't really do that anymore. And he's not, he's not working in your situation anymore. He'll, he'll say, you don't really need to go to church. <laughs> that's not important. You don't need to be in an environment that, you know, the glory of God is in and get the light and so that you'll grow. He'll say that you don't need to go to study your Bible or even be in a Bible study. I used to go to a Bible study and you don't need to be in prayer group. That's not important. You know, you don't, you don't need to go, you know, and it may start out with one, you know, you, oh, I'm not going now and that's not important, you know, and then he, he gets you convinced not to go a couple of times. But, you know, my wife, she has lots of plants out. And, you know, we have a whole plant room in the back. I've talked about this several times. But, you know, if we if we took one of those plants out of that environment, you know, it's not going to do the things it's supposed to do. So has he got your good concern in mind when he says things like that? If you're in the right environment now, you know, those plants, we put them out there. and There's a huge amount of light that gets in there. And, and they grow and they become their great potential that they're supposed to be. But, you know, he, he's trying to get you out of that environment that's conducive to you achieving the things God wants you to achieve in your life, you know. And, you know, he'll say you don't need to spend time with your wife anymore. That's not important, you know. And you do that a few times, and there's going to be a real problem. But he's trying to get you out of that environment, you know. You don't, you don't need to hang out with that friend of yours, and you don't need to do this. And, you know, you, you don't even need to be alive. <laughs> he's a deceiver. And he's a liar. You're here for a purpose. You're supposed to fulfill what God's called you to do. And he'll just try to deceive you, make you make you feel like you don't matter anymore. Yet you you matter to a whole lot more people than you think you do. That it's important that you see what God wants you to see. He's trying to get you out of that environment. You know, that's exactly what he did with Adam and Eve. And he got them out of the environment that, that they, they should have had to succeed and be successful. And that was his goal. And that's the goal with every believer and every Christian. He's trying to get them out of that environment. He knows if, you, if you're not getting the water you need, you don't get the nutrients that you need, you know, you won't fulfill the purpose that you need to fulfill that God has for you. So that's why we have to be very willful about making sure we're doing the things we need to do to be in the right environment. What do we know about the devil? Well, John 10, 10 says in the Amplified Classic, it says like the thief comes in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We see how he does that. He deceives you so he can steal from you. He deceives you so he can kill you, get you out of that environment. You're not a plant. If it's not in the sun, dies. That's how he kills you, right? He, he pulls you out of that environment and he says, and destroy. How does he destroy you? He gets you out of that environment. That's how he destroys you. Think about this. It's serious. You know, he, this is serious business. There's a real spiritual warfare going on. He can't make you do anything but, you know, he tries to get you out of that environment. But what do we know about God? He said, I came that they might have life and enjoy good life and have it in abundance. He wants you to have the abundance. He wants you to enjoy life, you know, but you have to make sure that you stay in the right environment. The Amplified says like this, to the full, till it overflows. That's the kind of life he wants you to have. He wants you to enjoy life, and he wants you to have it to the full until it overflows. This is what he wanted for Adam. This is what he wanted for Eve, and he wants for you. He also wanted to rule and reign in life. 
I can't emphasize that enough, you know, and some people don't want to hear that, you know, he said, well, he's in pride now, you know, no, he wants you to rule and reign in life through Jesus. We rule and reign in life. Look into your Bible there in the fifth chapter in the 17th verse of Romans. And this is the Amplified version. I love how it brings it out here. It says, for if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reign through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, I like it, in parentheses, unmerited favor, not because you did anything, it was unmerited, unmerited favor and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into the right standing with himself. So if you're having problems today, feel like you're worthy, he put you there. He, he made you righteous through Christ Jesus. And what does it say? To, to reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. The Messiah, the anointed one. Well, listen to what he said, though, to reign as kings in life. That's what we're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be reigning as kings in life. You don't need to be putting up with the devil in your home, letting him make you feel bad. You don't need to be putting up with him over your kids. You don't need to be putting up with him in any area of life because he created you to rule and reign in life. And we're going to talk more about this next Wednesday. But we love you. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy today. And, Father, we ask that you, as we as we get into your word, help us to have more revelation on the authority of the believer, Father. Help us to see what you want us to see. Help us to get what you want us to get, Father, out of your word. And help the blinders to be taken off so that we see the authority that he's given to the believer, we pray. And, Father, we just ask for it in Jesus' name. And Father, if there's someone here that's not saved, I ask you to start ministering to them as I pray for them for salvation today. Help them to come to know you through Jesus today, we ask, Father. And we just ask for it in Jesus' name. And if you don't know Jesus today, this is the best thing you could ever do for your life. It's way more important than your marriage, way more important than the next breath that you take. You need to know Jesus He's your everything. He's our source for everything in our lives. You know, he's the reason you put your pants on in the morning. You say, where'd you hear that? I heard that from TD Jakes, you know, a long time ago. He said that he's the reason I put my pants on in the morning coming from a broken life. You know, he's the reason that you get up. He's the reason why you try it again. He's the reason why you go forward and he wants to help you. He'll give you the grace to have a wonderful life. If you listen to get to know Jesus. Get to know my Jesus. Let's pray this prayer real quick if you'd like to know him today. All you got to do is just repeat this after me. The Bible says in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and 10th verse, if you confess the Lord Jesus, confess Jesus as Lord and believe God has risen Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. He didn't say it was going to happen tomorrow. He didn't say it's going to happen next week. He said, you shall be saved. You don't have to pray this over and over. You can get Jesus right now. Just pray it with me right now. Father, I just believe God has risen Jesus from the dead, and I confess Jesus as Lord of my life right now. Jesus be Lord of my life right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, if you pray that prayer, I'm so glad that you're in the family now. I'm so glad you're going to heaven with me. I'm so glad I got the opportunity to get to pray with you. It's an honor to get to pray with you today. If you would, let me know. I'd love to know about it at jeremiasministries at yahoo.com, or you can put it in the, uh, the, um, the comments there. I'd love to hear about your testimony. I believe it'll be, I believe it'll be a blessing to you. And, uh, you know, if you, if you can't write it down, write down the time and the date so you don't forget it. You know, we talked about the enemy deceiving people. You know, he likes to come and say, well, you didn't get saved. You can say, well, no, it happened today. It happened at uh, 7 p.m. on March 23rd, Central Time. He said, I got saved right here, right in your Bible. Write it somewhere. You don't forget it. And I, that way you'll remember what happened here today. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad I got to spend time with you. And I believe it's been a wonderful, wonderful time for you. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, we're going to be back next Sunday. I look forward to hearing from you, seeing you. And uh, God bless you. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. If you'd like to contact us for a prayer, praise reports, or offerings, go to JeremiahSmithMinistries.com. Thank you for listening.